Dustin Schutte with me as always from Outsider.com. John, the producer at the wheels, keeping us between the white lines. And Kyler Staley from TheHoosier.com joins us now. Kyler, a big night in Simon Scott Assembly Hall last night for a number of reasons. Yeah, I mean, that atmosphere last night was, you know, off the charts. Uh, that was like, you know, the first time I would even say it was a better atmosphere than the Purdue game last year. Obviously, that was a huge game for Indiana. But, um, I mean, the crowd was electric. You know, the students were electric from the start. Um, you know, they got in early. They were loud early. Um, but Indiana just played an overall just great game. Defensively, they were locked in. Um, controlled the game, I thought, for the majority of, of the whole time. Um, you know, you saw North Carolina try to make a few runs, you know, try to crawl back in at some points. But Indiana would just, you know, get a couple big stops and a couple big scores. Trace Jackson Davis played amazing. The guard play from Indiana was outstanding from, you know, Xavier Johnson, Jalen Huchafino, and Trey Galloway. Um, just an overall, just a huge win for Indiana. And I think they're starting to prove how legit they are. How about that start from Jalen Hood Shafino last night, Kyler? I mean, that kid in the biggest game of his young, early Indiana career, I mean, he stepped up. He was not afraid of the situation, wasn't afraid of the moment. I know he, it, it didn't really necessarily carry over um, into the rest of that game, but in the first half, for him to, to step up, hit some big shots early and kind of provide that early spark to get Indiana out in front and play with a lead for most of that game, I was really impressed with his ability to knock down some big time shots in a big time atmosphere. I, I feel like even though they've played some games, they went on the road to uh, Xavier and they've played some other games. Um, it can be easy to get distracted in the moment or be intimidated by the moment. Uh, I think you saw last night. He's there's not much that's going to phase that kid. No, and I, I think he uh, honestly, I think he set the tone for this Indiana game um, last night. Uh, you know, he has struggled. You know, through the first six games of the season, um, but. It, I think when I saw, when I looked on the floor, I think, you know, North Carolina, you know, kind of sagged off of him a little bit because they knew how struck, how much he was struggling. Um, you know, Jalen Huchofino is not known as a knockdown shooter or whatever, but, you know, he was just filling himself, you know, at the beginning of the game. And, you know, the Indiana the team kind of fed off of that energy um, a little bit. Jalen Huchofino is a very confident player. That's why, you know, Mike Wilson recruited him. Um, he doesn't play like a freshman. Um, he doesn't have a freshman mentality. Um, and that showed last night. He's not afraid of any big stage. Um, it's kind of a game that he kind of needed. I felt like the first few games, it was kind of when we're talking about Indiana's backcourt. Um, I felt like the first few games, it was Xavier Johnson trying to figure out how to play with Jalen Huchofino. And then, you know, the last three or four games, it was Jalen Huchofino trying to figure out how to play with Xavier Johnson. But I think now they've kind of figured it out, which is scary for the rest of, uh, you know, Indiana's uh, schedule. But uh, Jalen Huchofino, just an outstanding night, and he really stepped up when Indiana needed him to. Yeah, and it, I, I've talked about this a couple times today. Leading up to this game, uh, the, every game it seemed like two to three starters were just not producing much, at least offensively. I mean, they were going – Five for 24, twi five for 25, whatever. Um, and a lot, some of that had been with, with Jalen Huchifino. But even when he was doing that, when he was four of 12 uh, and four of 13, he was doing a lot of other things and still does a lot of other things. Uh, that some show up on the stat sheet, whether it's assists or rebounds. He's really been a great rebounding from the guard position. But to get off on that start last night, when he does that, like you said, it, it it sets a tone. It it I think it gives confidence to the rest of the team because we're like, oh damn, he's on that start. You know, the, the way no we can get on it. So it gives the entire team a, a level of confidence that makes that will make them very dangerous. Because if this team gets and stays confident, uh, they're I mean their their ceiling is their own making. Yeah, and I agree. And, like, if you ask anybody, you know, uh, or anybody on the Indiana team, they're not worried, for, you know, for the goals, you know, way down the line. They're worried about the next game. Their ceiling's in the next game. Um, records. But, you know, Jalen Huchifino, uh, he's just kind of that playmaking guard that Indiana has been missing for a long, long time. Um, he was creating very, very well last night. And even when he hasn't been scoring through these first seven games, um, he's just found other ways, like you mentioned, to set up his teammates for success. Um you know, and then also, you know, you talked about the starters, you know, some of them having off nights and everything. But, you know, other guys, Indiana's so deep that other guys can step up. Um, you saw Trey Galloway, you know, with uh, Race Thompson and Miller Cop. They didn't have a very great, great, great night, you know, as far as stats-wise. But you saw Trey Galloway come back after missing three games and really set an energy 
for Indiana. He had a phenomenal game. You know, he was great in transition. Um, you know, had that uh, had that fast break dunk where I literally thought the crowd was so loud that the roof was going to cave in. But, uh, you know, Indiana's depth is a major advantage for them. Um, so they can afford to have some players to have off nights because they got guys that can, you know, step up and they can, uh, they can lead this team. Well, and that's, that's kind of one of the things I was going to ask too, Kyler, was, I mean, we've seen nights where Malik, it's Malik who, who is playing well. We've seen nights where it's, where it's Tamar Bates or Jordan Geronimo, and last night it was Trey Galloway. I mean, this is one of the advantages that Indiana has not had recently where, like you said, you can have some guys in the starting five even that, that don't play well, and you can um, compensate with that with, with a deep bench. So... To, to see not just one guy off the bench come in and make a difference, but over the course of these games, and I know maybe some of the competition hasn't been great early in the season, but still to, to see that you can have those guys come in and be confident, even if they're getting you know between 11 and 15 minutes, that that's a huge difference that this team just hasn't had the last, gosh, I don't know, six, eight years. Yeah. No, I mean, just looking at this team, like, you know, through the first seven games, their confidence level is outstanding. And I think it starts with Trace Jackson Davis. Um, you know, it, it took Indiana, you know, the years that Trace Jackson Davis was there under Archie Miller, this Indiana team really did struggle with confidence, I felt, um, even though there was a lot of talent on the floor. Um, I don't know if you, if you could just say it was Archie Miller's system, you know, that caused that. But Mike Woodson, ever since he came in, he's really brought out that confidence. You know, last year, you know, I think Indiana, the whole team was just a little hesitant, you know, to be confident in some ways, if that makes sense. But, uh, you know, this year, I think Mike Woodson, they it just finally clicked. You know, Mike Wilson said, you guys are a great team. This is talent. You know, this is like a really deep team. You know, the deepest team that Indiana's had in a long, long time. Um, but confidence is big for this Indiana team, and they ride that confidence. And, like, I think, you know, every single, you know, from Mike Woodson to the last person on the bench, they believe that they can um, they can beat any team this year. Um, and that's, you know, that's just something that we haven't seen from an Indiana team in a long time. Well, it, it, they haven't had a team like that in a, in a long time, a team that could actually beat anybody and right now I think they do um I, we've seen because of the Phil Knight thing we we've, we've seen so many of teams in these early season tournaments we've gotten to see about everybody and you know Arizona might be the best team in the country I don't know we'll find out when Indiana plays them but Indiana there's a group there's probably 10 teams that you could just put it in a box and shake up and uh there's there's a lot of good talent at the top whether it's uh you know Arizona or Iowa State or you, you don't know it's it, but there's Indiana is definitely a team that I think that by the season's end this could be a top five team yeah and I think you know a lot of people saw that last night because you know this is really the, besides the Xavier game this is really the first game where you could see Indiana at a national level you know, playing against a really good team. Um, I think it opened up a lot of people's eyes. You know, there was a lot of talk with Purdue, you know, this past weekend, rightfully so. They had a phenomenal weekend, won the PK Invitational or whatever that was, um, whatever side of the bracket they were on. Whatever that was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so yeah, Purdue had the phenomenal. They were the talk of the, you know, you know, the nation for a long time. But Indiana, you know, showed that, you know, that on a big stage they can compete and they're legit. Um, I think, you know, this last night was kind of the first start of their, like, tough, brutal stretch that they have coming up schedule-wise. Um, you know, they passed the first test. Now you got a Rutgers. You can go to Rutgers, start off Big Ten play. You know, that, that script's kind of lining up for an emotional letdown game. But, uh, you know, the comments from Trey Jackson Davis saying that he's never beaten Rutgers um, kind of, you know, makes me think it a little bit different. I think he's going to be a little bit more motivated um, to go in and win. But, uh, you know, they got Rutgers, Nebraska starting the Big Ten play. Then, you know, it's the uh, Arizona game in Vegas, and you got Kansas. So you're going to really find out what this Indiana team's made of. They're going to be battle-tested by the end of it. Well, and no that, that's, well, that's one thing I wanted to hit on real quick, Kyler, was I, I don't think – the Rutgers game is more important because it's a conference game. And if you want aspirations of winning a Big Ten title, you got to go on the road and win that game. But what I'm more interested in is, is kind of seeing how this team handles success. And we saw it after they played – Xavier, but you're not playing anybody really a, of note. I mean, you're almost basically playing, a, you're, you're playing in a bye game. This is where you're going to have two, and I know Rutgers probably isn't what it was last year or what it's been in the past couple of years, but tough road environment. As you mentioned, Indiana has, has had their struggles against Rutgers. This is where I see how does Indiana handle success? Um, this, 
this game's not going to be talked about nearly as much as the North Carolina game. Not, I mean, I'm sure it is in the locker room, but not among the, the uh, among the media or the fans. So really going to be interested to see how they kind of handle the success going on the road again in a tough place to play a team. They've, they've had their struggles with um, I'm, this is where I'm really going to be really curious to see what this team is made of. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you know, you could say challenges throughout the season, what they've had so far, North Carolina being their first real challenge, but you know, I think this one's about as challenging as it gets, um, you know, just going on the road, starting off big 10 on the road. And, you know, this team was picked to win the big 10 conference and they got to prove that, you know, um, Indiana in the past, you know, they've had emotional wins. I, I go back to the Purdue game last year where they beat Purdue. And then the next game, you know, they laid an egg. I, I think it was against yeah. Illinois. Typical, you know, letdown game. And Illinois was a great team. Rutgers, you know, has had their ups and downs so far this season. But like you said, playing at the rack, that's a, uh, that's a tough place to play. Um, Rutgers has had Indiana's number for quite a while now, ever since Trace Jackson Davis committed. So 2018. Um, they got something to prove, Indiana, but this is a very motivation, you know, team that's full of just motivation right now. Um, they're hungry. They're still playing as the hunters, not the hunted, as they like to say. So um, this will be a really, really big test. You know, if Indiana, I feel if they can go on the road and they can beat Rutgers and not have that letdown game, it's time to take them a lot more serious than what we're taking them. Uh, also, Kyler, last night, Indiana was playing host to a ton of recruits in the house, a, a great environment for them to do so. Uh, let's see, it looked like six total, one, two, three, four, five, six, six that I know of. Only two in the 24 class, of which is kind of a an iffy spot for Indiana, but one of those guys that was there in that 24 class is Flory Badunga. And the reason I say that is because, you know, he's been a long, long thought to be, basically spoken for because you know he's from uh, Africa and there was a relationship already uh, through AAU and basically ever most of us think he was going to end up at Cincinnati but uh, atmospheres like last night man you, you can't just walk away and, and go back to Cincinnati and and you're not going to duplicate that atmosphere. Yeah, you know, that is, he is, you know, the most interesting when it comes to recruit, recruiting, you know, kind of where his recruiting's kind of fallen at. I think Flory Bedunga is maybe, yeah, just the most talked about in a way, you know, these next few years. But, um, you know, ever since, you know, he started getting offers from Purdue, um, Kentucky, Michigan, Michigan State, IU, um, it's just been kind of, you know, maybe there is a chance right there. And Indiana, you know, last week for his first game was three coaches deep, including Mike Woodson, Kenya Hunter, and I think Brian Walsh were there. So they're going to recruit Flory Badunga um, until they, you know, until the last second, until the last minute, until he recruits. Um, he, Flory Badunga is also taking a lot of visits. He's visited Butler multiple times. Um, he's went to Michigan State, um, I think Michigan as well. But last night was an atmosphere that, you know, this guy's not been playing basketball for more than four years, I think. He's never seen anything like this. Now, he was a Hoosier Asteria, but that's kind of just different. Um, they saw a game setting. Um, which is probably something that opened his eyes just a little bit. So Indiana is going to recruit him as hard as they can until the very last moment. But, uh, you know, it's big that they got him for that game last night. Also, uh, Jonathan Powell from that class uh, was in attendance. Yeah, he was. So uh, he, he plays alongside with Gabe Cubs at Centerville. Um, they're actually in town for this week because they're going to be playing um, – and uh, and Brownsburg for the sneakers for Santa shootout against Cathedral. So Xavier Booker. So we, we'll be seeing Gabe Kels versus Booker. Uh, kind of a preview to what they're going to be doing. And you'll be. So, will you be there covering that with the Hoosier.com? Yeah, I will be. I will be there all day, um, starting off, and then um, also players that are playing in that. You've got Flory Bedunga that's also going to be playing. Uh, they'll be playing Ben Davis, which I'm very much looking forward to that game. And then uh, Trent Sisley will also be there. Um, I can't think of off the top of my head who Heritage Hills plays for, but. A lot of Indiana guys there. Um, Gabe Cubs, Jonathan Powell, obviously on the same team. Then you got Trent Sisley and Floyd Badanga. But uh, it's it's a loaded lineup. But so yeah, back to uh, Jonathan Powell, 2024 guy. Indiana's had some interest in. I don't think there's an offer there yet. I think he has done a unofficial visit before last night um, as well. But yeah, he just came on um, the Centerville playing alongside Gabe Cubs. So they make a really really tough duo um, in the backcourt there for them. Another pair of guards, uh, Malik, five-star guards, Malik Thomas and Trey McKinney, also in the house last night. Yep. So Trey McKinney, Michigan guy, uh, seems like to me he's more favored to go to Michigan at this point. Um, from what I hear, the relationship's kind of strong there with Dwan Howard. 
Uh, Malik Thomas is a recent guy that they offered. Um, you know, very talented guard, very uh, very versatile. He's very physical, very athletic guard. So um, obviously, it's in 2025. So they're really trying to build relationships uh, with this Indiana staff with those guys um, super far in advance. Um, but you know, going to a game like this. A North Carolina game where you see Assembly Hall at its full, you know, full max level last night. That's something big for them and for these young guys. You know, they're really going to take a lot from that. Um, and I, from what I hear, you know, from who I saw, it looked like to me that every single player that was there last night had a really, really good experience. Uh, and then, of course, uh, two others uh, who seemed uh, to, uh, almost to be joined at the hip now. Uh, Trent Sisley, Jalen Harrelson, although they're not, play for different schools, different places, but both in that class, both uh, being recruited almost equally as our different players, the point guard and the, and the wing. Uh, but uh, those are two guys that Indiana has definitely already put a lot of effort into, and you st we still have a long way to go before the end of that. Yeah, and I think when you look at the 2025 class for Indiana as far as who they're targeting, I think those two set at the top of that class right now. Um, especially just definitely in the state, you know, they had the probably the next three best 2025s that are in state um, at games last week. So, you know, they're kind of doing their due diligence there. But Jalen Harrelson and Trent Sisley, like you said, kind of joined at the hip. You know, they're really good friends, played on the same AAU team, play on different schools this year. But uh, it feels like every time, you know, they're on a visit, you know, they're both on a visit together um, when, when they can, when, you know, their schedules aren't conflicted. But uh you know, Trent Sisley, Jalen Harrelson, Indiana's built a very, very good relationship with both of those guys. Um, you obviously still got a couple more years to go with that recruitment. You know, they're going to get a lot more offers down the road. You know, other coaches are going to try to build relationships there. But uh, Indiana's just done a phenomenal job so far with those two guys.